success success will make you hate a team. The Oilers in the 80s, the Penguins in the 90s, the Rangers in the mid-90s, Detroit in the late 90s, early 2000s. If your team is a success, people will hate you. So if people are getting tired of hearing about Tampa, and if Tampa fans are getting some blowback because people are like, oh, tired of hearing about Tampa, it's because they put together a pretty good team. Now, I just did a video on 10 guys having under-the-radar seasons. Yanni Gord would have been on there. But there's an interesting story with Yanni Gord, who just turned 26. Happy birthday, Yanni Gord. He turned 26 two days ago. I had no idea when I started this. I found that on his uh, Wikipedia page. Undrafted. Undrafted talent. That's why he's video worthy. In 2011-2012, for Victoriaville in the QMJHL, he was MVP of the league and he won a scoring title. Undrafted. Happens all the time, and I, I've always wondered. There's there's guys who put up big totals in juniors, never get drafted, never play professionally, and, and they just sort of fade. And then there's the ones who put up big totals and get, get signed as free agents, and then they just don't make it. Like Dane Fox, excuse me, as an example for the Canucks, who looked like he should be capable of being an NHL scorer, and then it just didn't happen for him. Yanni Gord plays four games for Worcester at the end of the year. 12-13, he plays 54 games for Worcester, eight goals, six assists, 14 points. Demoted to San Francisco in the East Coast Hockey League. Eight games, four goals, six assists, 10 points. A lot of players quit hockey coming out of junior, and they're like, well, I didn't get drafted. I'm, I'm shuffling between the East Coast League and the American League. I'll go back to school. I'll make something of myself. This isn't going to work out. I have respect for those players. I don't mind that players do that because I, I really don't blame them. You have your whole life ahead of you. If the hockey thing doesn't look like it's going to work out professionally, you move on. Good. In 13-14, 30 games in Kalamazoo, 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points. This is still in the East Coast League. He gets brought up by Worcester, 25 games, 4 goals, 20 assists, 24 points. And the dream is alive. The dream is alive in 13-14. He ends up in Syracuse, plays 18 games, 2 goals, 6 assists, 8 points. On March 10th of 2014, I put that way too far behind my neck. I think I, I, think I got a video-related injury. Uh, but March 10th of 2014, he gets signed to his first professional contract. He gets 587 grand. Two years, 587 grand each year, entry-level contract for the Tampa Bay Lightning. This is why I honestly love this kid. This is this is a great story. You, you can you can and the funny thing is, because it's Tampa. It doesn't get talked about very much because there's so many good stories. You can talk about Point. You can talk about Sergachev. You can talk about the comeback by Stamkos. Kucherov's goal totals. Nemestikov coming through as a star forward. Tyler Johnson go he recently has gone on another streak. This guy's under the radar. 15-16. 65 games in Syracuse. 14-15 four, first. 76 games. 29 goals. 20 assists. 57 points. 15-16. 65 games. 14 goals. 30 assists. 44 points. Plays two games with the Lightning, gets his first assist. Steve Eiserman sits down, looks this kid in the eye, and says, I'm giving you a one-year contract, and I'm giving you less money. Pays him twelve grand, five hundred dollars less. And he takes it. Yanni Gord takes it. And at the end of this contract, this one-year contract signed last summer, not the summer of 2017, but 2016, he would have been an unrestricted free agent at the end of this. He would have been a Group 6 free agent. 16-17, he plays in Syracuse, 56 games, 22 goals, 26 assists, 48 points. Getting paid less money seems to have motivated Yanni Gord. His point totals go back up into this range and beyond when this was a, was a drop. So I can understand why Eiserman gave him less money. His totals seem to be dropping the American League level. He seemed to have a little bit upside in, in terms of being you know an NHL talent. So you, you, you go ahead and say, look, I'll give you a little bit less money. One more year. We'll see if this is going to work. 16-17. He gets called up by Tampa. Plays 20 games. Six goals, two assists, eight points. I had speculated early on in the expansion process 
uh, maybe this Gord kid's going to be the one that ends up going to uh, Vegas. And Tampa fans were adamant. Steve Eiserman does not want to lose Yanni Gord. June 26th of last summer, this is 2017 now, Gord signs two years at $1 million per. So after 20 games and six goals, he signs $1 million per. Take that, Jordan Wheel. Jordan Wheel stayed in place, too. He took a little bit more money than Gord got. I'm just throwing that name out there for whatever. Um, but this season, in 32 games so far at the time I'm recording this, 10 goals, 13 assists, 23 points for Gord. Any other team that this kid plays for, if he was playing on a Canadian team, for instance, there'd be his face plastered all over any game they played. This inspirational story. This Quebec Major Junior League scoring champion that nobody signed, nobody drafted. Who, who rolled in the minors for a few years and, and actually ended up in the East Coast League for a while, who stuck with it, got his, got his contract, played that out, played the one-year show-me contract for less money, and before he was set to become an unrestricted free agent, he re-upped in Tampa because he knew that was his best chance to win, or they were the only, uh, only organization that took a shot and, and gave him that opportunity. Um, Yanni Gord is, is one of the, the reasons why I look at Tampa and I see them as a juggernaut right now. He's young. He's talented. He's kind of buried in that lineup. Tampa's lineup is so chock full of talent, it'd be easy to miss this kid. It'd be easy to talk about players and mention seven or eight guys on the roster before his name even comes up. But I'm telling you, if he was putting up 23 points in 32 games as a rookie in Montreal, in Ottawa, Toronto, even Winnipeg, and Winnipeg does get ignored somewhat on the national stage, you'd hear a lot about him. People will be talking about this this really talented player. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't qualify as a pure rookie this year because he did play two previous seasons and he played more than eight games in one of those seasons. So unless they change the regulations or unless I'm reading it wrong, he he is not a pure rookie this year. And he's 26 years of age, so he's right on the borderline anyways in terms of being a guy who could win a Calder. You, you have to be 26 or younger to win a Calder. The, the thing that's interesting with Gord is he goes against type. Most players play their best hockey, their most productive hockey, in their early 20s. And then their mid-20s, late-20s, it'll stay pretty stable. It is that rare player who is able to increase his talent level, whether it's getting faster, stronger, whatever he's done. He has gone from Kalamazoo to the Tampa Bay Lightning in a period of four years. He has gone from a guy who's kind of forgotten at the American League level to an NHL forward who Tampa wouldn't even consider moving unless they were getting something big in return. This is why we all hate Steve Eiserman. And I, I say that as a guy who doesn't actually hate Steve Eiserman. It's just he keeps signing these guys for really, really decent prices. And at the time he signed Gourd, I'm like, really? A million dollars per? For that? He hasn't really done anything yet. He had only played 22 games. He'd only scored nine points. I didn't I didn't think that in games I'd watched with Tampa, I didn't think that he stood out as a as a guy who, who was above probably third, fourth line, maybe. Wrong. Absolutely 100% wrong. And it's one of those reasons why when people talk about uh, Steve Eiserman and say there's going to be this contract apocalypse and Kucherov's going to come up and Tampa's not going to be able to sign him. Yeah, um, Eiserman has quite the eye for talent. He has scouts that do very, very well for him. He has scouts that make him look like a genius. It's not all Iserman. It's not all a GM. Your scouting staff plays a large role in this. Uh, when you look at, and, and I always use the Canucks because that's the team I follow for the longest, Thomas Gradine gets a lot of credit for scouting for the Canucks because any Euro that you see for Vancouver that's suddenly become a good player, Gradine is scouted. Tampa has seemingly a fleet of guys who are able to do this. 
They're able to sign these guys, and you look and go, oh, I don't know who that is. And then two years later, you can't imagine them not being in the NHL. This is one of the ultimate underdog stories in the NHL this year. I, I put it, to me, it's it's not on the same level as Alex Burroughs. Burroughs was always like kind of that ultimate in that he was in the ECHL for a while. He never showed that he was going to be an NHL talent, NHL level player in juniors or anywhere along the way, but he never gave up. This is similar, and I imagine it has to be hard for a player who has a scoring title in juniors to go into the American League, struggle, end up in the East Coast League. That has to be tough. Because your dream is not East Coast. Your dream is, I'm going to the NHL. And that demotion has to be really rough. So, that's part of the reason why I look at Tampa and see them as being this uh, fantastic team that I think a lot of people are going to learn to hate in the coming years. Because this diamond in the rough, and that's exactly what he was, they're able to pick him off. And GMs that do this, that's more important than being good at the drafting table. Being able to know who to sign, when to sign them, and when to buy low. So you're getting them for a really good contract. And you see something, you go, you know what? I'm keeping that kid in my organization. When other people are saying, why? Or people unfamiliar with the player are thinking, well, I don't know if that's really where their priorities should be. They should be looking at, and you point at a, at a veteran and say, that's the guy they should be keeping. They let that veteran go, and next thing you know, this kid's producing at the Ameri at the, the NHL level. He's not in the American League, and he's not going back to the American League. Anyways, that's my take on it. Let me know your take on it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through and you just happened upon this video. And uh, there you go. It's kind of an, an underdog story. It's one of those feel-good stories. And as we head into the Christmas season, I'm probably going to do more stuff like this. So stay tuned. Thanks for being a subscriber, and if you're not, hit that button, and I'll talk to you again soon.